Good morning. We come together today giving praise to our Heavenly Father for all the blessings that He gives to us. And the reading for this day is from the Gospel of St. John, the 17th chapter, beginning with the first verse. After Jesus had spoken these words, He looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given Him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given Him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I have had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I, I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have given, been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given to me, so that they may be one as we are one while I was with them. I protected them in your name that you gave, have given to me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth of your word. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And shortly thereafter, Jesus would allow them to leave with him. Uh, after Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to the place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. It had been a great night so far. It had been a great night because they had shared the Passover meal, a meal that was part of their tradition for many, many centuries. A, a meal that had four cups with it. Uh, and one of the cups of wine that they would partake of was a cup of redemption. And it is this cup where Jesus would say, this is my blood of the New Testament that is shed for you. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And before that, he had broken bread and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. All the time sitting at table with his accuser all the time sitting at table with Judas who would betray him. And he would say to the others, the one who is going to betray me has dipped his hand into the bowl with me. And the others would say, well, who in the world is it? Because we've all dipped our hands in the bowl with you. And in their own way, they all would betray him that first Monday, Thursday. Judas would betray him to those who would arrest him. The others would betray him by running away into the night, and Peter would betray him three times by denying that he even knew him. But they would have to cross the Kidron Valley to get to the Mount of Olives. The Kidron Valley separates the city of Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. Ever since King Hezekiah dammed up its water sources in order to provide an adequate water supply for the city of Jerusalem, for most of the year the Kidron Valley is very dry a mere shadow of its former self. From the earliest times, it has been the site of cemeteries. Over the centuries, a few of these grave sites have had famous names associated with them, such as King Hezekiah himself. But it is almost certain that those people are not buried there. 
They certainly are not buried there now, since grave robbers have long since done their work and emptied them. It was through this valley, however, that this cemetery, actually, that Jesus led his disciples on that first Monday Thursday. When they had finished their Passover meal in the upper room and Jesus had instituted the Last Supper, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Bible says Jesus had indicated the same thing. This is my body, he had said. This is my blood. That's the language of dying. Jesus understands that the road to our redemption leads through the cemetery. My soul is sorrowful, he says, even unto death. No wonder he wants someone to watch and pray with him. The road to redemption leads through the cemetery. Not only for Jesus, but also for us as well. That's one of the reasons Jesus gave us the Lord's Supper on this day, to help us make it through the cemetery with him. That's the only way we will make it through successfully, that is, with him. So in this sacrament, he gives us himself. He comes to be with us so that we can negotiate the cemetery successfully. The body of Christ we are offered, the bread of life, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Before we get to the cemetery to prepare us for it. No wonder so many Christians, if they know that they're on their deathbed, ask the pastor for Holy Communion. Someone who was asked, are you willing to die with Jesus? answered this way, well, I'm certainly not willing to die without him. A thousand years before this night, King David fled in panic across the very Kidron Valley that Jesus would cross to hide on the Mount of Olives from his rebellious son Absalom. For Absalom was determined to take over the kingdom from his father. The difference was that David had some loyal followers who did not forsake him and flee or fall asleep, but remained on alert and saw to it that Absalom was defeated. David escaped with his life and with his kingdom and went on to rule. Tonight, beyond the Kidron Valley, Jesus will not escape with his life. Like Absalom of old, Judas is approaching with an armed force, and this time no one is there to turn him back. The king, capital K, will be captured, bound, tried, condemned, and done to death. Absalom, the son of David, could not accomplish that. Jesus, the son of David, could not avoid it. Having offered the world his body and blood for the forgiveness of sin, Jesus will now let the body be taken, that blood be shed at last, with thorns and whip and nails and spear, a thousand years before, King David had wept bitterly, O oh, Absalom, Absalom, my son. Absalom, if only I, I had died in your stead. And tonight, on the far side of the Kidron Valley, the obedient son of David fulfills that prayer. He dies for the rebellious and the disobedient. The road to redemption leads through the cemetery. And Jesus leads the way. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the many blessings you give to us each and every day and for the love that you share with us. We thank you for the redemption that you have won for us. And we pray that you would be with those of our number this day who are ill or hospitalized, granting them your healing touch. We pray that you would be with those who mourn, granting them your comfort. We thank you, O Lord, for taking us by the hand and leading us all the way, all the way home to your heavenly kingdom and to your peace that will know no end. 